The Roush lowering spring should appeal to the 2005 to 2014 GT owners out there who are looking to go with a very mild drop compared to some of your other spring options in the category. In fact, the Roush springs that we are featuring here will lower the car a half inch on all four corners when used with the factory dampers or one inch all around when used with the optional Roush dampers. Now the springs will be offered in a full kit including both the front and rear springs but will also be available for just the fronts or the rear separately for owners looking to get a little bit custom. Pricing will obviously depend on whether you go with two or four springs, but you're gonna be looking at the mid $200 price point for all four and just north of hundred bucks for either the front or rear springs. So first things first here, guys, if you're looking for a big drop to slam the car, the Roush springs will simply not be the option for you. Instead, these progressive rate springs will offer a very mild drop of again, a half inch on all four corners when used with those factory dampers and approaching one inch on all four corners when used with the optional Roush dampers and different aftermarket options currently available in the category. And honestly, guys, I don't think that's a bad thing as not everyone out there is really looking to dump their car for a number of different reasons. This could pertain to ride quality, maybe not everyone is into that slam look, or maybe the road quality in your area isn't exactly ideal. On the other hand, the mild drop of the Roush Springs will keep that factory nose down rake while at the same time chipping away at that factory wheel gap, which as we all know, is a bit excessive on those S197s. Now, as I did mention earlier here, guys, the Roush Springs do feature that progressive spring rate in place of a standard or linear rate. And while Roush doesn't provide us with any exact spring rate numbers, one can expect a slightly more comfortable ride while on the road thanks to the softer initial spring rate while also improved handling performance as these guys tend to firm up and compress which will also help reduce that body roll in turns. It's also very important to point out that Roush does offer these springs as a complete kit of four, so two fronts and two rears, or you can just grab the fronts or rears by themselves, depending on what you are looking to achieve. For instance, maybe you wanna go with a bigger drop up front compared to the rear to fit a big old tire out back, which is something you can do thanks to the flexibility of this kit. But as it sits now with all four springs, most owners aren't going to have any trouble fitting either a stock or aftermarket wheel and tire combo due to the mild nature of the drop itself. Install will get a soft three out of three wrenches according to the site here and a few hours from start to finish depending on your expertise and just how fast you like to work. Now spring installs nine times out of 10 will require the use of a spring compressor, so just make sure you have one of those on hand before getting started, along with a good assortment of sockets and wrenches. And to give you a better idea of what's involved for this job, here is a detailed walkthrough. Tools required for this install, 3 8 impact, half inch impact, pry bar, various extensions, 3 8 inch drive, various universal swivels, a good socket set ranging from 10 millimeter all the way up to 21, flathead screwdriver, push pin removal tool, 18 millimeter wrench, an eight millimeter wrench, soft rubber mallet, ball peen hammer, and a bungee cord. So before we get our vehicle up in the air, I do want to access the trunk to remove the top nuts on our shocks. We're just gonna pop our trunk open and then lay our little liner back to expose our nut. That is a 15 millimeter nut. I'm gonna grab my impact and hopefully without having to grab the sleeve of the shock with a vice grip, you can just pop this nut right off. Yep, there it goes. We're gonna do that on both sides and then get the vehicle in the air. All right, again, we're on the driver's side now, pulling back that liner and I'm gonna take this 15 off. I'm just gonna keep these back here because we are gonna be reusing our nuts and shocks. So when we get all of our springs in, we can get that rear, we can lower the vehicle back down, get the rear back in place, and get these shocks back in. All right, so I am utilizing a lift. If you are performing this on the ground, please chalk your front wheels because you can't set the parking brake in the front, but you need to get the rear up high enough that you can drop that rear axle to get your springs out. So I'm gonna go up with the lift. All right, now I'm gonna get these wheels off 
and use a little pry bar to get this cover off. All right guys, now that we have our wheels off, you can see that the top of the shock came through the body mount there. That's exactly what we wanted. Next, we're gonna get the vehicle even higher in the air, disconnect our sway bar here, and remove our shocks, and then we can lower the rear down and get that spring out. So let's get the vehicle even higher in the air now. All right, since we're lowering the rear axle, we don't wanna put any unnecessary stress on our brake line or speed sensor, so we're gonna be removing our little bracket here with a 10 mil. Just pull that out, and that'll give us a lot more travel when we go to put this up in the air and lower that axle. All right, so what I'm doing now is just putting the jack stands underneath the axle, taking a little bit of the pressure off this sway bar, because we are gonna have to take our end links out next. All right, guys, our next step is to take our 15 millimeter bolt out of the top of our sway bar end link on both sides, and then swing this down. Swing this out of the way. Don't worry about that. That was just the little nut clip that goes in here. Let me just put that right back. All right, guys, now I'm on the passenger side, right at the end of our pan hard bar with an 18 millimeter socket. What we're gonna do now is remove this bolt and this little nut here. We're gonna drop our pan hard bar out of the way because we need to, again, lower this axle enough to get this spring out. So there's the nut. I'll we'll pull the bolt here in a second. All right, guys, now I'm gonna have a pry bar right behind the panhard bar here. We're just gonna pry down on it just like that. We're just gonna leave it there. Now we can lower our axle down even further. All right, guys, now I'm lowering the rear axle down evenly on both sides, just enough that we can get that spring off its seat. All right, just like that. Now that top isolator did stay up in there. That's fine. We are gonna be reusing that. So we're gonna get the other spring out now. All right guys, again, our rubber isolator on the top and bottom did remain on the vehicle. Our GT only has about 40,000 miles. If yours has more, they may come out, but you do have to reuse them, so just set it on top. But here we go, we're gonna install our rear springs now. We just slide right in the factory's location, just like that. Now we're gonna go to the other side and get the other spring in. All right guys, now we're gonna be putting some of our suspension components back into place, starting with our pan hard bar. Now I did come a up a little bit on my jacks just to try to get it roughly in the same spot. I'm gonna use a rubber mallet, just tap it into place. All right, it looks like I need to come up a little bit over there because if you come up on the driver's side, it actually pushes the pan hard bar to the passenger side. Now we're gonna put our nut tab on there and just start those threads. Again, this is an 18 millimeter. All right guys, now we're gonna swing our sway bar back into place. And before I did this, I made sure my nuts, my nut clips were seated in the right position. Do both at the same time if I can. I'm gonna start this bolt over here. All right, now that that one's started, we can move on to the other one.
Again, these are 15 millimeter bolts. All right, guys, now once we have our sway bar and our pan hard bar back in place, we are going to take our jacks out of the way, put our wheels back on, and then the top nut for our shock. All right, guys, we have a couple more things to button up. First being our brake line bracket here. Let's put our 10 millimeter bolt back in. We're gonna do that on both sides. The next step after that is to get our shock back into place. Now I'm gonna put the wheel back on, lower the vehicle down. That'll enable the shock to travel back up and us to get that stud back through the body hole. All right, let's put the wheel back on get the vehicle on the ground, and get our shock back into its place. All right, once the vehicle's on the ground, your shock is actually gonna be touching the top of the body here. All you have to do is just pull it out a little bit, and it'll start winding itself up and into the hole. We're gonna do that on both sides and get the vehicle all the way on the ground now. All right, guys, we're back in the trunk, and remember we left our two nuts here for the top of our shock. This, these are 15 millimeter. I'm just gonna start them as far as I can before I start it with my impact. Be right about there. You just want to squish them down pretty good. You don't want the top of the washer hitting the body though. All right, then we're gonna put the nut on the other side as well. All right guys, now that we're finished with the back, we're gonna move on to the front. I already popped the hood, got our wheel cover off, and every step you see on this side, we're gonna repeat on the passenger side. So let's get the hood popped open. Let's get this wheel off. All right, guys, now that we have the wheel off, we have to remove this brake line bracket that holds our brake line and our wheel speed sensor here. So it's a 10 millimeter bolt on the back side of the strut assembly. I'm just gonna take this out. Separate that from there. All right, now I'm gonna grab my push pin removal tool and pry this Christmas tree clip out of the strut. All right guys, now I have a 15 millimeter socket and I'm gonna take off the whole caliper and bracket. I'm gonna take the top one out and the bottom. All right guys, I need a little more length on my brake lines. The caliper is out. I'm gonna take out this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Take this bracket off. Use my push pin removal tool for that brake line right there. Just get behind it. Pry it off. All right guys, I have my caliper hanging right here. I wanna get a little more distance out of our brake line, so I'm gonna take this bracket off as well. That is a 10 millimeter. All right, now with that, I'm gonna use a push pin removal tool on this too, just to get a little bit more. All right. Now using a bungee cord, I'm actually gonna use this little wiring harness that goes through the body here. 
I'm gonna run my bungee cord around it and get my caliper right here, right here, and let that just hang out by itself. So there's no stress on any of these lines, they're just free. Now we're, we're also gonna take off our rotor here. We gotta take off this factory little, little lock washer. All right, now that I broke a couple of those tabs off, we can just thread it off. This is kind of a one-time use deal. If your brakes have already been serviced, the chances are that this, this thing's not gonna be on there. Again, this vehicle has 40,000 miles on it, so it's pretty, it's in pretty good shape. All right, now we're gonna remove the 18 millimeter nut holding the top of our sway bar. All right, so it looks like this whole shaft is spinning. I'm gonna have to get an 18 millimeter wrench and possibly an eight or a 10 millimeter on the end of here. All right guys, now I have my 18 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna use my box end there. Then I have a ratcheting eight millimeter. I'm gonna utilize the end here and take that nut off. All right, looks like I'm running out and I can get it off by hand now. Remove that. Just set that off to the side, just like your brake. We are reusing our sway bar end link. Our next step is to support the bottom of our control arm, get these nuts off, and the nuts on the strut tower. All right, guys, moving on, we're gonna be taking care of our spindle nuts and bolts. On this side, the nut is a 21 millimeter, and then the bolt head is an 18. I have my impact and a breaker bar on this side, just to hold what I got here. We are reusing the factory hardware. The only thing we're replacing is our spring. All right, now we're gonna pull this bottom bolt out. And you'll see our, our lower control arm wanted to shoot up. We are gonna to have to push that down to get our strut back into place. But now we're gonna lower the vehicle down you got the four nuts that are on top of this strut off. All right, now that we're at the top of the strut, we're gonna be removing these four 13 millimeter nuts. I'm gonna completely remove three and leave the last one only with a couple threads left. That way the strut doesn't fall out. All right, right about there. So with one hand, I'm gonna support my strut. And I'm gonna remove this last nut and the strut itself. Now let's take this to the spring compressor, get our old spring off and our new one on there. All right guys, you're probably not gonna have a fancy spring compressor like this at your house. You can go to your local auto parts store and rent the ones that clamp onto the sides. Just be extremely careful with them. All right, so I do have this set up as straight up and down as I can on the lowermost coil and up here on the top hat. I'm going to slowly compress this down and release this 21 millimeter nut on the top. All right, that should be good right about there. The bottom is separating from the coil there. All right, now I have my 21 millimeter socket on my half inch impact, and I'm gonna grab the bottom of this because I don't want this strut falling right to the bottom. So I'm gonna hit this. All right, I just grabbed my air impact because my electric one wasn't strong enough. And I'm going to zip off the top. All right, now we're gonna slowly release the pressure on this spring to get our top hat and our top mount back. So we're gonna transfer it to our new spring. And there it is. We'll get the spring out of here, take our top hat off, and get our new spring up in here. All right, so we have our new Roush spring. I did steal the rubber isolator off of our old stock spring. It's gonna overlap just a little bit, as you see here. And we're gonna place it into our spring compressor the same way we, we placed our stock one in. This needs to come down a little bit. Again, we want the spring straight up and down, as level as possible.
Now we need to bring our spring compressor down and set our top hooks. All right, once you have your spring set up and your spring compressor the way that you want, I have our top hat already on the top and our isolator set in the bottom. I'm going to start to compress our new Roush spring. You're not gonna have to compress this one as much as the stock one, because again, this is a sh lowering spring. All right, now I'm gonna bring up our strut. Uh, let's make sure our spring is sitting in the bottom correctly, and let's tighten that up. All right, so I'm gonna start loosening my spring compressor to get some tension on the bottom of this strut. All right, now that I have the spring sitting on our strut the correct way, we're gonna do this the other one and get it on the vehicle. All right, guys, now that we have our Roush spring on our stock strut, we're gonna put it back into the strut tower. I have the four nuts in my hand. I'm gonna start a couple nuts. We can tighten these up. Let's go back under. Now this will move any way you want it. We're gonna make sure that our wheel speed sensor line, our brake lines are all in back of our strut and spindle assembly. So when we bring it into place, we can just slide it in and push it down and start our bolts. We're gonna be right here. The bolts go from forward in, if you remember. So I'm gonna grab the end here. No stinking pry bar. All right, guys, now let's start our nuts here. And then the one on the bottom. This tab is gonna go right on the bottom of the spindle and the strut. Let's tighten this up and get it good. Make sure our wheel speed sensor's good. All right guys, now let's put our sway bar end link back in this place. That was that 18 millimeter nut. We used the box end back here and my ratcheting eight millimeter. All right, now once you get it close, you can get your final tightens with that 18 millimeter nut. That's good there. All right, guys, let's put our brake lines back into place. So that 10 millimeter bolt here, just goes right into the body. And then there's one behind the strut assembly here. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna get my hand back there. So you're gonna have these push pins along the body as well for your wheel speed sensor line. Just put those back in. Let's, get our, let's actually get our caliper back on, our rotor and caliper back on, and we can get that last brake line. All right, guys, let's put our rotor on first. Make sure that it's seated all the way back. Now I'm gonna get my caliper bolts. And I have my knee on the bottom just to lay that rotor flat. The rotor will slide on. Start our bolts top and bottom and tighten them down. Again, these are a 15 millimeter bolt. All right, guys, let's get our last bracket back in place. This is the brake line bracket behind the strut. Again, it's a 10 millimeter little machine screw type deal. My impact and zip that back in. Just recheck everything, make sure 
Let's back to stock, minus the new coil in there. All right, that's gonna wrap up my install of these Roush Blowing Springs for this 2006 Mustang GT. For more parts like this, keep it here at AmericanMuscle.com.